The topic of today's video is the prime number counting equation. Uh, this equation is an original equation derived by me, Sergio Fernandez. I always start my videos by actually showing the equation, uh, which is going to be the topic of the video I'm making. This is the equation which I'm going to be talking about today. So what is a prime number counting equation? Well, a prime number counting function, or in this case, a prime number counting equation, since I, I derive an actual equation uh, for counting prime numbers from uh, an earlier equation I had created, is, as the name implies, uh, an equation that tells you how many prime numbers there are in a given range. So why is this equation important? Well, um, today pretty much anything to do with prime numbers is, is a hot topic since we use prime numbers uh, a lot in technology and cryptography to do everything from uh, um, encrypting the emails that get sent back and forth over the internet to every time you pay make a purchase uh, and use your credit card, um, the information gets encrypted and sent back and forth so that no one else could steal your data. So pretty much anything uh, to do with prime numbers right now is a hot topic since uh, prime numbers have become a very important part of technology. Okay, in order for me to build this equation, I'm gonna have to uh, use some other equation as building blocks. So I'm gonna use from a little bag of tricks my number of factors equation. This is uh, my favorite part of the video. This is where I get to show you how I came up with the equation. Um, to start off, uh, the equation I'm going to use to derive the prime number equation is this uh, other equation that I had uh, created earlier. It is the number factors equation. As the name implies, uh, this equation, you give it any number x and it'll tell you how many factors that number has. I'm not going to explain again how I arrived at this equation since I already made another video um, explaining how I got this equation. I'll put a link at the bottom of this video to the video where I show you how I came up with this equation if you're interested in seeing how this equation works. But basically, this equation um, for any given x will tell you how many factors that um, that number has. So if I tell it the number 6, it tells me 6 has 4 factors. If I tell it the number 12, 12 has 6 factors. 15, 4 factors. So this equation is uh, an equation I derived originally as a way to check for prime numbers. Why? Because I know the, prime the definition of prime number is a number that has two factors, one in itself. So this equation can, tell, can, s can find all the prime numbers by simply solving uh, at the point where this equation equals 2. So if I take this equation and I say find all the x, uh, all the x values where x equals 2, 2 is at 2, 2 is at 3, 2 is at 5, at 7, 11, uh, 13, and so on. So basically, um, this function will be equal to 2 for every prime number that exists. That's why I originally created this equation. And the interest is the video is a very, very interesting video. You should probably take a look at it below. Okay. So this equation is nice. In that it gives, in, in that I could identify all the prime numbers. Now, if somehow I could um, just look at the prime numbers and keep count of all the prime numbers in a given range, I could uh, count those numbers and it'll tell me how many uh, prime numbers are in the range. So, for example, from 1 to 25, uh, these are the points where 
x equals 2 these are the prime numbers so it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 there's nine prime numbers between 1 and 25 according to my equation um, if I could get rid of all these other numbers which are not the prime numbers and if I only had these numbers I could simply have an equation which adds all the results of this function from 1 to 25 and that won't give me the prime but that'll give me twice the prime because um, if I get rid of all these numbers again um, at 2 I have 2 at 3 I have 2 so 2 plus 2 is 4 and uh, 6 8 10 12 14 16 and 18 so adding uh, the result of this function at these points will give me 18 uh, 18 is actually twice uh, the number of prime uh, numbers than it, than, than it is so actually I don't want him back I would like the number 9 back um, I could do this by adjusting my equation my original equation a little bit my equations uh, oh, my original equation let, let me show you my original equation sums all the numbers from 1 to x that's it's counting all the, fact, all the factors if I adjust my equations to start at 2 and I get rid of the the one being a factor um, it actually adjusts the the graph nicely so this is the same graph as before but because I'm not taking into the account the one as a factor uh, all the prime numbers actually now for uh, get return all the prime number actually return one now so for two you get one for three again one etc etc for the prime numbers it pretty much just took the the entire function and just kind of wrapped it down one integer. Now, why is this important? This is important because um, I could just simply take the output of this function f from one to the desired range and add them up. And if in the process of adding it up, I could ignore the nine prime values, then the sum of this will actually give me the number of prime in a given range. So from 2 to 25 if i add the the output of my function for all the prime numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 i get the number of primes in that range now the problem with adding these numbers up is these guys i need to get rid of these guys because if i add everything up i actually don't get 9 i get 1 plus 2 plus 2 more is 4 five six seven so these numbers here are throwing off what I want to do so uh, if I could get rid of these numbers um, I could just add if I could if I could make bring all these numbers down to zero and leave these numbers at one then I could just add everything up and it'll give me the the the, the number of primes within a given range um, I know I adjusted this to one purposely because there's a nice trick that I like to use when I want to keep some numbers and disregards the other numbers. Uh, that's raising the number to infinity. That's raising the numbers to higher and higher power. When you raise the number to higher and higher power, uh, one remains one, and the other numbers, um, if they are less than one, they tend to go down to zero. The problem is that these numbers are not less than one. So if I raise the this function to higher and higher powers one will stay one but these guys will explode out to infinity and that's not what i want um but i have another trick of modifying my equation so that i have the nice conditions of of using my infinity trick um if i take one and divide it by this function at all the points where one is one it'll remain one so one over one gives you one one over one gives you one but for the points that are greater than one, when I divide it by w when I would divide one by that point, I don't actually get a fraction less than one. So, one divided by one is one. One divided by one is one. One divided by two, which is the result of this, is a half. One divided by three, which is the also the result of this one, is a third. So basically, uh, one divided by this function will keep one at one, and it'll. So uh, let's let's let me show you the equation. So take the original equation 
and one divided by that equation, that'll make sure that all the ones remain one because one divided by well one is one, but all the numbers greater than one, two, three, or four now become a fraction less than one. So my new equation will look like this. All the points where one was one, it remains one, but all the points where the one was greater than one, it's now below the one line, it's a fraction. Um, this point was, I believe, uh, three, I think it was. So it becomes a third, so on and so forth. Great, so now that I took one, one over my adjusted original equation, all the points where one is one remain one, all the points where one was great, uh, less greater than one, now it's less than one. Now I could use my infinity trick. What is my infinity trick? If I take my adjusted equation, if I take my adjusted equation, which was this, and I raise it to infinity, that'll make sure that uh, uh, one remains one because no matter what power you raise one to, one square, one cube, one to the thousand, it's always one. But numbers less than one tend to get smaller and smaller. So if I take my original equation, let's say I square it, all the points where one was one stays one, but other points where where uh, one is less than one, they keep on getting smaller. Before, uh, at this point, it was like a third. Now it's like a ninth or something like that. So you see, all these numbers tend to go down. And if I keep on raising the power, it keep on getting it keeps on getting smaller and smaller. And the closer I reach to infinity, all these points which were greater than one are now zero. And all the points were there were one still remain one. So raising uh, the reciprocal of the original function to uh, a, n a number approaching infinity gives me a nice, very, a nice equation. The equation uh, that it gives me is for prime numbers the value returns one. For nine prime numbers which were greater than one, now it returns zero because it was a fraction and, and as a fraction, as you raise the fraction to a bigger and bigger power, it went towards zero. So beautiful, now all I, could do, all I have to do is take the equation and just, if I wanna see how many uh, prime numbers there are between one and x, for example, here's one and 25, I just have to add every result of my function. So I go to um, the point for, uh, for two, I get a one. For three, I get a one, which is two. For four, now I get a zero, so it still remains two. For five, um, I get a one, so it goes to three. For six, now I get a, a zero, so it, so it stays at three, so on and so forth. So uh, in this example, between two and 25, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine prime numbers. All the other values are zero, so they don't contribute. So my, f so this function is telling me that between two and twenty-five, there are prime uh, um, nine prime numbers. Now, uh, how do I do this? I just simply add um, every every output of my newly modified function, and by adding it, I get my final equation, which is my prime number counting equation. So again. Um, this part of here gives you the number of factors. Adjusting this from one to two, make sure the, the prime numbers, uh, instead of returning two as the number of factors, it returns one as the number of factors. I wanted this because one over this function for one will remain one, but one over numbers which have more than one factors, which is uh, nine prime numbers, it'll return numbers bigger than one, and one over a number bigger than one will give you a number a number less between one and zero, a number less than one. Taking that and and raising it to a higher a high power as it approaches infinity, uh, the values for this that gives one will remain one. The values for this that give you less than one will go down to zero. So I could so I'm gonna get one for prime numbers, zero for nine prime numbers. At this point, if I want to see how many numbers there are in a given range. I just add all the uh, values from two to that given range of this equation, and that'll uh, add the prime numbers. 
let's look at let's look at what this look like looks like in a, in a graph. Okay, so between two and eight, uh, this um, my modified equation is looking a bit a little bit like a wave. <laughs> Uh, my counting function equation is kind of looking like a, a ladder going up, and and the equation says that between two and eight there are four prime numbers, and between five, uh, between two and five, it says that there are uh, three prime numbers. So between t 2 and 8, 4 prime numbers. 2 and 5, 3 prime numbers. Let's see if that's true. 2 and 8, the prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, and 7. 1, 2, three, 4. 4 numbers are, are prime in that equation, in that range. So it does uh, give the right number of prime numbers. Let's keep on looking at a a bigger range to see what the graph looks like. Now, if you s uh, between uh, two and fourteen, there are six prime numbers. If you look at the graph, it's beginning to look like a kind of like a staircase. Let's look at uh, the right uh, for higher. Between uh, uh, two and twenty-six. It says that there are nine prime numbers. Again, it's beginning to look like a staircase. One in 50. Um, I'm assuming it's 15 since it's between 14 and 16. There are 15 prime numbers. So as you go al along, at first it looks like a, s uh, a staircase. But the longer you go out, it actually almost begins to look like a straight line if you go further out. Now, what does this equation look like? Um, this equation looks like what uh, one of the Riemann uh, equation out there looks like. Uh, this uh, famous Riemann equation that people say that it gives you the number of um, prime numbers, um, but they don't know why it gives you some. I, I think somebody wants to a formal proof of why it works. Um, well, um, that equation, I think you have to go through a lot of iterations to get an actual, uh, an accurate um, value for the number of primes. And, and I don't think they know, uh, they don't have a proof of why it works. This equation gives you exact values, and I gave you an explanation of how, how the equation works. Now, don't quote me too much on the Re Riemann um, equ equation since I haven't looked at it much. I uh, haven't looked into it much. I decided to build my own equation, my own original equation. But basically this equation, um, my equation, uh, tells you uh, how, uh, how many prime numbers there are in a given range. It counts the number of prime numbers in that given range. And I've shown you the proof of the equation. So there's no need to be dealing with an equation that gives an approximation and then nobody knows what how, how exactly it works. This equation will give you exactly the number of primes in a given range and I've shown you how I arrived at that equation. And uh, thank you. Um, I put this equation up because uh, I saw a lot of interest out there for, the uh, for this equation. So now you got this prime number equation. Um, it all came uh, about because of my original equation which I did which I created to find which were the prime numbers it was a um, a factor counting equation so this is my prime number equation it gives you the exact values thank you and I'll see you guys in the next video